Jay Nila Prema Dana Karana Pacho Treasure divine love, <clears throat> and who and is filled with compassion and mercy. Where has such a personality as Srinivas Acharya gone? 
Where are my Srup Damodar and Rupa Goswami? Where is Sanatan? Where is Raghunath Das, the savior of the fallen? Where are my Raghunath Bhatta and Gopal Bhatta? And where is Krishna Das Kavaraj? Where did Lord Garanga, the great dancer, suddenly go? I will smash my head against a rock and enter into fire. Where will I find Lord Garanga, the reservoir of all wonderful qualities? Being unable to obtain the association of Lord Garanga, accompanied by all of these devotees in whose association he performed his pastimes, Naratam Das simply weeps. So today is the disappearance of Lochan Das Thakur. So we'll read about Lochan Das Thakur. Because last time I gave class, it was the appearance of Lochan Das Thakur. Not last time, but some time ago, I gave class and it was the appearance of Lochan Das Thakur. Now it's the disappearance. Okay, so. Maybe Jurita Prabhu could sing us his song. Uh, this, uh, yeah, his. Maybe I'll read first and then. I'll. So we need two mics, one for the ladies side and one for the men's side. Do you think you could get the other one for the... It's broken? This is the yellow one. Because then we could save time. Save time later. And the brown trays don't have to exercise so much, you know. Moving to the other side of the room. Okay. Sri Lochandas Thakur was a disciple of Sri Narahari Sakar Thakur, a dearest associate of Lord Chaitanya. So this is from Chaitanya Mangala, his book, Lochandas Thakur's book. My hope of hopes is to be near the lotus feet of Sri Narahari Thakur and serve him with my very life. The cherished desire of the fallen Lochan Das is to be allowed by Narahari's grace to sing the glories of Lord Granga. My Lord is Sri Narahari Thakur, I am his servant. Bowing before him, <coughs> I beg for his service. This is my only aspiration. And the quote. Lochan Das Thakur wrote Chaitanya Mangal, which tells many pastimes of Lord Chaitanya not revealed by Vrindavan Das Thakur or Krishna Das Kaviraj. He mentions an especially touching conversation Sri Gorsundar had with Vishnu Priya Devi the night before he took sannyas. Okay, so we will read that. We'll read that excerpt from the Chaitanya Mangal right now. So this is so, the, so yeah, it's being said here that that there's three, or it's not, I'm saying now, but there's three main biographies of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One is Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, the next one is Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, and the third one is Sri Chaitanya Mangal. So, who we're reading about today, Lochandas Thakur, whose appearance day, he is the author of Chaitanya Mangal. And what's being stated here is that there's certain pastimes that are not described in the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat or the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita that Lochandas Thakur has described in the Sri Chaitanya Mangal. Um, so some interesting details of some pastimes. So here, there's one excerpt that we'll read. And this is from uh, Vishnu Priya's biography, which is Lord Chaitanya's wife, before I accepted sannyas. Uh, so here, we could listen now. So this is the night before he took sannyas. Lochandas Thakur tells pastimes not mentioned elsewhere. He narrates the especially touching last conversation Lord Granga had with Vishnu Priya, Devi, the night before he took sannyas. In a voice choked with emotion, Vishnu Priya said, tell me, O Prananath. So who could say what is Prananath? Younger devotees, yes. Yes, Lord of my life. 
Prana's life and Nath is Lord. Tell me, O Prana Nath, is it true the rumor I heard that you will take sannyas and leave me? If I lose your association, I might as well end my life by drinking poison. Responding with gentle, compassionate words, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Vishnu Priya, you are as dear to me as life itself. There is no need to worry. Please hear what I'm about to say, for it will help you. So similarly, as Lord Chaitanya is telling Vishnu Priya that it will help her, that means it will help us too. <laughs> so please listen. The only truth in this world is Bhagavan. So who's Bhagavan? Who could say who's Bhagavan? Krishna. And what does Bhagavan mean? Possessor of opulence. Yeah, six opulences in full. So in this truth, uh, the only truth in this world is Bhagavan, <coughs> Krishna, and the Vaishnavas. And guess what he says next? Does anyone remember? Or not guess, but does anyone recall what he says? We read this. I read this uh, some time ago when I gave class. Um, the only truth in this world is Bhagavan and Vaishnavas. And then he says something else in relation. Uh, yeah, that's true. But he, then but then it's kind of like, it's, uh, what is it? A lot of the times, right, in scripture we'll say, this is truth, this is illusion, right? Or this is demoniac, this is divine. So, so here he says, everything else is illusion. <laughs> so, There's Bhagavan and the Vaishnavas. Everything else is illusion. Fathers, mothers, children, relationships between men and women are all illusory. Krishna is the master, the real husband of everyone. Don't lament. Don't worry. Your name is Vishnu Priya. Therefore, fulfill the real meaning of Vishnu Priya. And always think of Krishna within your heart. Then Lord Chaitanya showed his four-armed form which helped Vishnu Priya understand his absolute position. Seeing this vanquished Vishnu Priya's grief and pain. She felt blissful. This vision of Mahaprabhu's instructions removed her bewilderment. But she kept the mentality of taking the Lord as her husband. Sobbing and falling at Lord Chaitanya's feet, she said, I beg you to accept my humble submission. You are the most dear Lord of my life, my only wealth. Without you, without your service, I have nothing. <laughs> so it's not that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was, you know, like nowadays, it's not that he was you know, leaving his uh, wife because she was a botheration or because she was unqualified in so many ways or anything like that. Uh, but she was the most qualified, Vishnu Priya. So... You can, you know, some you can imagine for an ordinary person how difficult would it, how difficult it would be to leave and take sannyas. But anyways, uh, Lord Chaitanya had to do it. So, Lord Chaitanya embraced Vishnu Priya with his eyes. He gave her mercy with these words: "I shall travel here and there, but wherever I go, I shall always remain at your place." Understand the supremely independent nature of Lord Chaitanya, Vishnu Priya said, you must do what, what makes you happy, my Lord. Let no one be an obstacle of your divine mission. And that's the end of the excerpt. So then it says, Vishnu Priya, she adopted a life, austere life, and uh, she worshipped a particular form of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And she had a, had a very strict diet. And the diet was that every round... She chanted, she would have one ton of prasad. No, she'd have one grain of rice for every round she chanted. Very austere. Practically uh, impossible for most. Uh, known today, she worshipped the Lord Chaitanya, a form of Lord Chaitanya, Dameshwara Mahaprabhu. Vishnu Priya's gorgeous deity of Sri, uh, Sri Guranga Mahaprabhu resides in Navadip city. <coughs> so when you go to Mayapur, everybody should go to Mayapur. You should go as 
so if you haven't been, you should you should go. And if you have been, you should go again. <laughs> it's an amazing place. Of course, it's a bit of a trip to get there, especially from America. But it's uh, very wonderful. And just outside of our ISKCON campus, you walk down the road about uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes, something like that. And then you could pay a boatman, small fee, take the boat across to Navadweep, the city in Navadweep. And there, in Navadweep, you take a rickshaw, and it will take you, you just say, Dameshwar Mahaprabhu, so many devotees go there. And then that will take you into a temple in which this beautiful deity of Lord Chaitanya is residing. This is Vishnu Priya's deity, Dameshwar Mahaprabhu. Okay. Yeah. Quite big, actually. Uh, bigger than Giridhari here. Maybe like... Maybe like uh, maybe like Dwarkadish in Los Angeles, and very he's made out of like neem wood, and his you know body golden complexion. He has a very nice smile, and he has this like this you know his his arms are his hands are like that. I think which means like he's giving mercy or something. But uh, yeah, very beautiful deity, and I was wondering because I went there and I was thinking, oh, is it that um, cause I saw there was one lady, you know, devotee there and she was the one who was sitting there, you know, accepting everybody's donations and worshiping the deity and giving them, giving everybody Charnamrita. And I was thinking just as Vishnu Priya worshiped Dameshwara Mahaprabhu, <coughs> I was wondering if it was like a long standing tradition that women worship <laughs> Dameshwara Mahaprabhu because I saw a bunch of women there. Like, usually in, yeah, usually in India, the pujaris are uh, male, but there was a woman there behind the altar, like sitting close to the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So. All right, that's an excerpt from uh, Chaitanya Mangal, so we'll continue. Being a talented musician, so this is Lord Chandas Thakur, Lochan Das told Mahaprabhu's pastimes in beautiful poetry filled with fire and rhythm. Common people could easily understand the divine character of Sri Chaitanya and awaken their religious feelings. As devotees regularly chant the Vedic epics, Ramayana and Mahabharata, Gaudiya Vaishnav still wander through Bengal reciting the Chaitanya Mangal. Lochan Das Thakur also wrote many songs praising Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Nityananda Prabhu, and Gauri Das Pandit. Lochandas stresses that Raganuga Bhaktas must take shelter of Gadadhar, Vrindavan, Ishwari <coughs> to attain Radhagovinda Prema Bhakti. Sri the Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur used to print and distribute Lochandas Thakur's Sri Chaitanya Mangal. Sri the Prabhupada was very fond of his bhajans. While singing Parama Karuna, Sri the Prabhupada would plunge into the ocean of Guranga Prema. Prabhupada wrote an extensive commentary on this bhajan, Bhajo Bhajo Bhai Chaitanya Nittai Suridi Vishwasakodi. Lord Chandas asked everyone, My dear brother, just worship Lord Chaitanya Nityananda with firm faith and conviction. Don't think that this chanting and dancing will not lead to the desired goal. It will. It, will, it is the assurance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that one will get all perfection by this process. Therefore, one must chant with firm faith and conviction. Lord Chandas Thakur Ki Jai. So now we will request Javita Prabhu to oh, yes. say his, sing his song, which is originally written by Lo Chandas Thakur, but Javita Prabhu put into English. Who can play the cartels? And then who can play the drum? I'm not going to say who can play the harmonium because I don't think we're at that point yet. But no, we're getting there. We're getting there. So this, this uh, song grew out of my realization that the words paramakarana perfectly match with super compassionate. And from that came the song. Okay. D, D, D. Param, oops, uh, English. 
Super compassion that are these two golden lords Nitai Gora Chandra. They are the best of lords, crest jewels of avatars, founts of pure bliss and deep wonder. All friends, just worship them, Chaitanya Nitai, fixing your mind with firm faith. Give up all sense pleasure, dive in the sea of bliss, chant Hari Hari today. Super compassion, it are these two golden lords, Nitai Gora Chandra. They are the best of lords, crest jewels of avatars, founts of pure bliss and deep wonder. Brothers and sisters within the three worlds, there is no one as kindly as they. Even the bird stones and animals weep in bliss when they hear talks of their traits. Cooper compassion are these two golden lords, Nittai, Gora Chandra. They are the best of lords, crest jewels of avatars, founts of pure bliss and deep wonder. Listen to what I say, if you do not attain any desire for their service. Yama will punish you, causing you endless pain. This is what Lord Chanda says. Super compassionate are these two golden lords, Nittai, Gora Chandra. They are the best of lords, crest jewels of avatars, founts of pure bliss and deep wonder. Founts of pure bliss and deep wonder. Gora Premanandi, Hari Hari Bo. Did Prabhupada write something? I think he wrote something about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Karma Karuna. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'll just read the translation of the song. I won't read the Prabhupada's purport. If you want, you could read it later. Lord Nittai and Lord Gorachandra are very merciful. They are the essence of all incarnations. The specific significance of these incarnations that they, is that they introduced a process of chanting and dancing. It is simply joyful. <coughs> My dear brothers, I request that you just worship Lord Chaitanya and Nityananda with firm conviction and faith. If one wants to be Krishna conscious by this process, one has to give up, give up his engagement and sense gratification. Become absorbed in worshiping Lord Chaitanya Nityananda and simply chant Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, without any material motive. My dear brothers, just try to examine this. Within the three worlds, there's no one like Lord Chaitanya or Lord Nityananda. Their merciful qualities are so great that upon hearing them, even birds and beasts cry and stones melt. But I, Lochandas, regret that I'm entrapped by sense gratification. I have no attraction for the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, and therefore Yamaraj, the superintendent of death, is punishing me by not allowing me to be attracted by this movement. Try. Okay. So we go to the Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <coughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Okay, text 5 of the 4th canto, chapter 22, Prithimaraja's meeting with the Kumaras. Tat pada shocha shaliler Majitalaka bandanaha Tatrashilavatam vritam 
Tatpada, their lotus feet, shaucha, washed, salilai, water, marjta, sprinkled, alaka, hair, bandanaha, bunch, tatra, there, shilabhadam, of the respectable gentleman, vrittam, behavior, acharan, Behaving. Manayan, Manayan. Practicing. Practicing. Eva, <coughs> like. <coughs> Hare Krishna. Translation. After this, the king took the water which had washed the lotus feet of the Kumaras and sprinkled it over his hair. By such respectful actions, the king, as an exemplary ex personality, showed how to receive a spiritually advanced personality. Purport. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Apani Achari Prabhu Jivera Shikaya. It is very well known that whatever Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught in his life as Acharya, he himself practiced. When he was preaching as a devotee, although he was detected by several great personalities to be the incarnation of Krishna, he never agreed to be addressed as an incarnation. Even though one may be an incarnation of Krishna or especially empowered by him, he should not advertise that he is an incarnation. People will automatically accept the real truth in due course of time. Prithu Maharaj was the ideal Vaishnav king, therefore he taught others by his personal behavior how to receive and respect saintly persons like the Kumaras. When a saintly person comes to one's home, it is the Vedic custom first to wash his feet with water and then sprinkle this water over the heads of oneself and one's family. Prithu Maharaj did this, for he was an exemplary teacher of the people in general. Omiganita Baranda Sya Gananjana Shlakaya Chukshilan Meditamina Tasma Shi Gravida Maha Kam Karidvachalam Pangam Lange Tegidim Yat Kipa Tamaham Bande Shigadun did Tarinam Vancha Kapadibhishta Kipa Sindhu Bivacha Patitanam Pavane Bio Vaishnavi Bio Namanamaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shivasadi Goda Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Okay, I'll read the translation again. After this, the king took the water which had washed the lotus feet of the Kumaras and sprinkled it over his hair. By such respectful actions, the king, as an exemplary personality, showed how to receive a saintly, a spiritually advanced personality. So it is no, well, so it is a open secret how to be an advanced devotee. And how is that an open secret? Because there are many advanced devotees who show the way. So therefore it is not a secret. It would be a secret if there was no advanced devotee showing the way. How to be advanced would be a mystery. But it's not a mystery. For example here Prithu Maharaj is an, he himself is advanced devotee, advanced personality, and he shows how to be advanced. <laughs> and, 
And one way is by respecting saintly persons by properly. Um, why is that? Because how does one become advanced by respecting advanced personalities? Well, uh, <coughs> because you get their blessings and you get their you get their mercy, and Krishna's pleased ultimately. So and then and that will help one advanced. So that's an aspect of being advanced. An aspect of being advanced is not that everybody worships you and everybody offers you know service to you and and et cetera, et cetera. It's all just you're accepting everything. But advanced also means, you, know, you may be accepting, <laughs> that's okay. But advanced means that you're giving, giving. And the more advanced a person is, the more they're able to give more and more and more. Uh, service and, and they, the more they know how to uh, give in, in the proper way or Krishna conscious way. So, and therefore, if we want to advance, then we should study the lives of great devotees, such as Prithu Maharaj and so many other great devotees. And you could say, more importantly, for this particular age, is that we study Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Prabhupada. Because Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the say, father of the Sankirtan movement. He is the the starter of the Sankirtan movement, the divine, right, uh, inaugurator of the Sankirtan movement. And, uh, and specifically, he came to teach how to be a devotee. <laughs> That's what he came for, by the way. So if, you wanna, if we want to be de good devotees, if we want to be advanced devotees, then we better study Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or else how are we going to be advanced? by just our own mental concoctions, by, you know, seeing the, 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 I don't know, bhaktas of the ashram, or, I mean, I don't know how we're supposed to be advanced. We're supposed to, okay, it's good to, you know, see the bhaktas of the ashram, and hopefully the bhaktas of the ashram are fallen, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But, just to, as Rajendra Prabhu likes to say, with our rubber eyeballs, <laughs> checking out the bhaktas of the Hare Krishna movement, okay, we may get somewhere, but ultimately we need to study Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that means reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, hearing the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and if someone says, well, I'm on the Bhagavad Gita still, okay, good. Then, <coughs> then speed it up and get to the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, but aside from that, we could hear, I mean, like, um, there's one devotee, his name's D Damodar, not this Damodar, another Damodar, there's many Damodars, but one devotee, Damodar, he, uh, he has recorded very dramatically, he uh, reads the Chaitanya Bhagavat. So he's, 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 he's done that service, which is very valuable service, for the Vaishnava world, for the, for the world of Vaishnavas means for us and for so many other people or aspiring Vaishnava. For. And the idea is that it's the, the pastimes of Lord, of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad, they're very attractive and they're very wonderful and we learn a lot how to be a devotee in the bliss of Krishna consciousness. We learn about the bliss of Krishna consciousness which is very important. Just like Lochan Das Thakur was, was saying here, the birds, the beasts, the st are crying in ecstasy, hearing the glories of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The stones are melting, right? So, in other words, it's absolutely amazing, these glories. So we should want to hear them. And uh, therefore, you know, when we're driving and when we're... There's so much, you could say, dead time in w that could be used properly. Driving to work... I mean, driving to work, people drive 30 minutes there, 30 minutes back, driving to the temple, people drive 20 minutes there, 20 minutes back. Uh, uh, you know, people, people, a lot of the times, people are, um, you know, people have to eat, but do, <laughs> take prasad. So, and sometimes we do, I mean, I, I suspect everybody here, 
I know everybody here for, yeah, I could say that. I, I know everybody here takes prasadam by themselves at times, everybody in this room. So while we're there, instead of you know, taking prasad for you know, 20, 30 minutes, listening to whatever our mind is producing, which not, not necessarily is negative. We may have good thoughts, Christian conscious thoughts, I hope. Right? But that time could be used you know, get our little phone out or, you know, whatever, press the play button and listen to Chaitanya Bhagavat, Damodar's Chaitanya Bhagavat. Uh, and in this way, we will feel spiritually inspired, we'll feel enlivened, we'll feel enthusiastic, we'll feel blissful, right? Hearing about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. My spiritual master, His Holiness Giraj Swami, he does it every day. He takes lunch, and while he, ta while he takes lunch, you know, devotees are serving him lunch. He's a guru. That's what gurus have to do. They have to accept service for the sake of the disciples, uh, becoming humble and so on. And he also served his spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, very humbly. So therefore he's, he could accept service because he's humble. Uh, but every day when he's taking lunch, you know, 30 minutes or whatever, then he presses that play button and Damodar Prabhu is, is reciting the Chaitanya Bhagavat and he's listening to it. So, um, so we should do that. And, and there's so many, you could say, so much dead time. Uh, yeah, like I just said, there's other times like that too. We're getting ready in the morning and so many other times. We're cooking, <coughs> cleaning. Um, so, of course, kirtan's there, and many devotees like kirtan and you know, listen to kirtan while they're doing other things. But also, these pastimes are important. They have to go together, kirtan and pastimes. And lectures of Bhagavatam. Uh, so yeah, it is no um, secret how to become advanced. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching us, provided we hear, provided we listen, provided we read. And um, also, Srila Prabhupada's teaching us how to be advanced. His life, we could also hear about Srila Prabhupada's life. There's so many memories. Siddhanta Prabhu, he, one of Prabhupada's disciples, he recorded devotees, so many devotees. It's actually a very valuable service he did. So many devotees uh, telling their remembrances about Srila Prabhupada. And they're very sweet. All the, all the I mean, I find them very sweet. All of them are just wonderful. Devotees uh, pouring out their you know, ex appreciation and their affection for Srila Prabhupada and telling how he, he was in Detroit and he did this and that. And so they're so beautiful. And uh, we can listen to those as well. And, and aside from them being wonderful and amazing, we learn from them how to be advanced. Or else it's very difficult. <coughs> it's very difficult. Um, because we, we, we won't have the right ideas without doing this. And therefore, Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami says in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that very difficult things can become easy. What's difficult nowadays? What, controlling our mind, controlling our senses. Someone may think becoming Krishna conscious is difficult. Someone may think just living in this world's difficult. Someone may think preaching or book distribution is difficult. I mean, we have a big list of things that we may think are difficult. Some people have problems with their anger, have problems with this, have problems, you know, there's a big list of things that we may think are difficult. But what does Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami says? He says that very difficult things will become easy, provided you do what? Take pharmaceuticals and, you know, get a, a, a fish, and get a, take a um, fish tank, you know, get a fish tank and fish tank. Okay. I don't know, take pharmaceuticals or, I don't know, get a fast car and, you know. I don't know, that's my point. I don't know what it does. <laughs> now the point is that it's, uh, <coughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. Where's, where, where's it? Yeah, I, I was saying that are things supposed to become easier by us, you know, materially adjusting ourselves? Now, whatever. People may take pharmaceuticals. I mean, Prabhupada said, 
about this because sometimes people get upset. Oh, you're criticizing. I need these pharmaceuticals for my you know mental stability. Okay, prob. Anyways, that's a whole other discussion. But Prabhupada, one particular time, this is by my spiritual master. He said this. So he said that there was a devotee having trouble with her mind, and uh, and Prabhupada said, oh. We have to take care of devotees, and part of their body is, you know, their subtle body. And uh, he said, if she's having problems, then she could go to a psychiatrist. So Prabhupada allowed her to go. Anyways, so so anyways, but back to the point is that we may think so many things are difficult, but they become very easy provided we do what Krishna does. Yeah, yeah, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Remember Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> and very difficult, very easy things, um, if we do not remember Lord Chaitanya, become difficult. So therefore he's saying, you should remember Lord Chaitanya and offer your obeisance to Lord Chaitanya. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, so lastly is that Prithu Maharaj, that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we have so many wonderful examples, and also followers of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu nowadays, and previous followers. So many examples we could learn from. But when, but here it's saying that Prithimaraj received the Kumaras and he sprinkled the water from their lotus feet on his head. He was very humble. Uh, has anybody ever done that before? <laughs> oh, really? Oh, you had it done to you. Okay. So no one has taking the water that's washed to saintly devotees feet and sprinkle on their head or drank it or anything like that. You did that, Damrash? Yeah. Okay. So that should be on everybody's list. I know, you know, the karmis won't understand this, but we're not supposed to be karmis. So <laughs> devotees should be able to understand this. Uh, so we could take the dust, the dust, these are all sanctified things and it says in the scripture that that will purify us. I did it before. I, I was at my spiritual master's Vyasa Puja, and part of the ceremony is they wash his feet and uh, with yogurt and butter and or, um, ghee and different things. And then, and then devotees, wild devotees, they, uh, to the you know, materialists, look very cool. Oh, we, we, I drank it. You know, we drank it. That's what we did. You drink the China Mita. And I could say, that those two times I had the chair, I don't know what they did or whatever, but it was the best tournament I had. I, I, I'm not making it up. It was actually, yeah, the best. Yeah, they used ghee and yogurt and a few different things. Um, <laughs> not so. We don't use soap. Um, one devotee, two last things about washing feet. One devotee, he... Uh, he said that he drank one spiritual master's uh, Trinamrita, and this is what he said. I mean, he said, "Oh, after I drank that, he said I was intoxicated for hours. You know, I was like really blissed out for hours." And apparently, Yudhishthir tells this pastime Yudhishthir, you know, big beauty here in San Diego. You know, he tells this pastime that Radhana Swami, according to Yudhishthir, he said said that there was, apparently there was a place where devotees would wash their feet out here. And then one morning he saw His Holiness Radhana Swami, you know, no one was around, but you know, Radhana Swami was drinking that water. And uh, Yudhishthira, huh? I'll tell you the story. And Yudhishthira, he said, oh Maharaj, you know, what are you doing? And he said, oh, this, this, uh, I'm drinking this water. And he said, this water, this is the most powerful substance in the universe. So then Radhana Swami said, Yudhishthir, he said, I know you like a dare, so I dare you to drink this water for one month and see what happens. So then Yudhishthir said, okay. So then Yudhishthir drank that water for one month. And then he said, after that month, everything fell apart. He said, I lost my car, I lost my girlfriend, I lost, I lost everything. And I came back to Radhana Swami, I said, oh Maharaj, you know, what, what happened? 
And uh, Maharaj, and he said Maharaj was just smiling. <laughs> he was just smiling. But it, you know, his Krishna consciousness increased. <coughs> Not that you have to lose everything to get Krishna consciousness, but sometimes you do. So, and then, and then, and then, before you know it, he was in Maharaj's van traveling around, because Maharaj would travel around to different colleges and give talks, and and they used to call this van Vrinda van. Anyways. So it is a powerful substance, and Prithu Maharaj demonstrates that, and uh, we could, if we get the opportunity, engage in that. So, does anybody have any uh, comments, questions? <coughs> yes. Good morning and Hare Krishna. Jai, Hare Krishna. Sir, um, just want to give you a little update on my friend that was sick. We prayed for him. He did go to the hospital. He's going back again, but he greatly appreciated the prayers. And I told him about you, that you prayed also, and he said he saw you because he watched. I asked him to watch. So we got another live tube watch. Well, I told him today to watch too. So anyway, so he gratefully thanked me. <coughs> And then I have another friend, now I'm at an age where people are getting sick, I'm in that bracket, so I, have, I told my other friend that I go to the temple, he goes, pray for me, his name is Nick. They can't figure out what's wrong with him, but he's going tests that he's losing blood cells like anything and he's sick, so he's having so many tests done, so he asked me to pray for him. I've known him from 1970s, from high school, so can we have a hurry bowl for Nick? Thank you. Thank you so much. And the other thing I want to do is I'm, gonna, I'm planning to come tonight at the Krishna Lounge and I prepared Good. with Hindu perfect, you know, vegetarian home. Offered it to God. I made little snacks today for, and it needs to be a little bit heated. It tastes better. So can I bring it to, who would I bring it to? Tomorrow. Do you? Okay. So I'll be here at 6.30. Yeah. Jamal's the man. So I'll bring, I'll show you how to heat it up. It's doklas, common doklas. So it's a Gujarati dish. Anyway, you'll like it. It's, it's, I offered it to Krishna you first it without already. tasting it. Okay, good. And I, no, I'm born Hindu here. So we do this from, I've done, so I know. All right, <laughs> and good. it's a vegetarian home for generation. So, good, good. so I'll bring it to you guys tonight. Anyway. It's, it's, you know, I've made two lasagna bowls. Do you know what common doklas are? Okay, yeah, that's what I made. There's probably about two lasagna plates, uh, so it's quite a few. So if there are 40 people, it's a nice little appetizer. I'll bring it to you early, so you'll see it. All right, good. Thank you. All right. Grand Bhagavatam Ki Jai.